The June trade deficit data stokes wider current account deficit fears. Euro plunges to two decade low versus the dollar. Forex market sell off rattles the stock market. The Sensex and the Nifty reverse early gains, ending in the red. Power stocks gain. India service sector activity at highest level in 11 years in June amid strong demand. But stubborn inflation remains a concern as prices charged rose at the sharpest rate in almost five years. More heat on Chinese mobile phone manufacturers. The Enforcement Directorate conducting raids at 44 locations of Vivo and other Chinese firms in connection with a case of alleged money laundering. And later on the show, we'll get you an exclusive conversation with CII President Sanjeev Bajaj. The rupee ending at a record low of 79.37 versus the US dollar. And according to brokerage house Nomura, the Indian rupee is expected to reach 82 to the US dollar by September before recovering to 81 by the end of this year on account of multiple headwinds, including slower export growth, higher imports, aggressive interest rate hikes in the US and ongoing foreign fund outflows. In its latest report, Nomura has said that the Reserve Bank of India's strategy of selling US dollars could slow the pace of depreciation. The forecast comes at a time when India's trade deficit widened to yet another record high of $25.6 billion in June on account of lackluster exports and higher imports. Nomura analysts say the trade deficit will remain high and could rise to 3.3% of GDP by March next year. Here is a state of the economy view from none other than Sanjeev Bajaj, the CII president who spoke to Siddharth Zarabi Business Today TV's managing editor, listen into that conversation where he talks about the rising trade deficit, the depreciating rupee, and also concerns around inflation. Uh, I talked to you at a time when uh, we have seen record uh, uh, highs once again in the trade deficit. And in the recent past, the government of India has taken several steps. Um, do you think these steps are likely to help us tackle uh, the rising trade deficit? You know, we've seen this uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, let's see uh, how it pans out in the coming months as well. Uh, we, we are in an unusual situation where when you look at uh, the Indian economy by itself has shown uh, reasonable growth and has been quite resilient. On the other hand, uh, we have inflation that's playing truant, driven by a bunch of external factors, uh, um, and some of them beyond our control, whether it's oil, whether it's uh, the war situation, the uh, supply chain disruptions that we keep seeing again and again. Uh, keeping these things in mind, I think both what we've seen the RBI do with taking rates up to tame uh, inflation by bringing, in, bringing down some domestic demand, as well as the multiple actions that the government has taken mm. um, has resulted in inflation moderating last month. But I think we need to see a few more months before we decide uh, whether these steps are enough, or whether uh, we need to do more. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, uh, how much should the ordinary uh, borrower uh, in India be prepared as far as uh, interest rates are concerned? How high can interest rates go given the current situation? You know, we've seen the last two years through the pandemic uh, are all-time low interest rates. So even with the 90 basis points that RBI has increased uh, rates in this fiscal, we are still below where rates were prior to the pandemic. And we are about 25 basis points below that. And to that extent, uh, I believe that uh, RBI does have some more ammunition left. The balance, however, that is required is that uh, while some of these rate hikes will bring down domestic demand and to that extent correctly bring down inflation, but a large part of our inflation is supply side and it is external. Um, so I would hope that we see sensible uh, rate hikes uh, because if we go much beyond that, 
we will end up bringing growth down rather than uh, bringing inflation down. But um, um, we, we've got smart people all over the place, including at the central bank, and I'm sure that they are more cognizant uh, of this than uh, the rest of us. So uh, we, we should wait and watch. I believe uh, rainfall has started off well, mm. and if we see a good monsoon, then uh, we should see a moderation in food prices. Uh, we're starting to see a moderation in commodity prices, as you know. So for uh, all that we know that the worst may be behind us, but I will not uh, declare victory so early. Wait a few more months. Mr. Bajaj, I have a couple more uh, points to discuss with you. One is this windfall tax on, uh, on crude oil production. There are some export restrictions also and higher uh, duties, import duties on gold. Uh, do you think these are necessary steps in the current context or do they interfere in a uh, sense with... Uh, normal market dynamics and do you think there should be a end date for the export uh, uh, duties that have been put on petroleum products? Well, we are in an exceptional situation and that's why this requires uh, tactical initiatives to help us bring our economy um, on a more even keel. But yes, as you said, uh, the triggers that have led to these actions should have a reversal trigger as well that can be time-based, that can be based on uh, certain other numbers, which, uh, as you know, as far as the export duty is concerned on uh, oil products, the government has indicated. So uh, uh, they, they are, I would say, actions taken for a particular situation or a particular period of time. And once those are over, those actions should be removed as well. Uh, as the president of CII, India's largest trade body, what would you say at this stage is required in terms of uh, policy interventions? Because uh, while we are talking about taxes, there's also been a, a GST of 5% that's been uh, imposed, for example, on hospital rooms. And there is some reaction on that front also. So in the current uh, framework for the next six months, what kind of... Uh, specific policy interventions would you expect? You know, so the last point that you mentioned is really on room rates over 5,000 rupees. So um, it is in a, in a particular limited set of room rates which goes well beyond what one could say is affordable. Overall, I think what we need to look to do is for the government to continue its infrastructure spend. Uh, it's done this very earnestly over the last couple of years and should continue to do so. Do so. Uh, accelerate, I would say, the divestment program, the asset monetization program, because that's what will provide additional funds as well. We are starting to see uh, CapEx investment by the private sector in a number of uh, sectors from uh, logistics to real estate, commodity, uh, construction. And um, as inflation moderates, we will see more and more of this happening because uh, capacity utilization has increased over the last few years across multiple sectors. So I think we are in a situation where it calls us for some amount of patience and doing what we've been doing so far and with tactical uh, actions being taken as required. One very quick and final uh, point, and this is to do with inflation. Your own sense about uh, when you expect it to really uh, cool off and stabilize uh, in the near future? You know, that's, a, that's quite a loaded question. <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball for that because we are in a period still of significant uncertainty. Hmm. And uh, inflation that's being driven by actions outside of India, very difficult for us to take that call. But I do hope that uh, we have a good monsoon that will shave off, I believe, uh, almost 75 basis points, if not more, of inflation provide some amount of relief. And some of the actions uh, RBI has taken and likely to take further should help bring it in control as well. Mr. Bajaj, as I let you go, uh, I want a passing comment from you on the rupee. I have a report uh, with me from Nomura that's come out today, and they say that we should be prepared for record height deficits becoming the norm and the rupee at 82 to the dollar by the third quarter of the year. Uh, your comments on that? We believe that rupee should find its own uh, normal levels. Um, it has its pros and cons based on which side of the equation you're in. 
but uh, where the central bank can and is playing a role is to minimize volatility. Uh, as long as uh, the rupee gradually resets to a value which is reflective of uh, where it stands intrinsic intrinsically, that is fine. But uh, excessive volatility is what we hope gets avoided. All right, Mr. Bajaj. Uh, uh, thank you very much, as always, for those quick comments about uh, the current economic thank situation. You. We hope to connect with you again very soon. Thank you very much for your time with us today. Thank you. The GST Council's decision to hike taxes on health care has irked industry body FICI and hospital associations. Take a look at the special report to find out how this decision will impact you. In a move that will add to inflationary pressures on the common man, the expenditure for treatment at private hospitals is set to rise after the imposition of a 5% goods and service tax on all non-ICU beds with a charge of rupees 5,000 and above. A lot of GST on all the consumables, all the input materials, services which we use to provide healthcare services and this increases cost to the hospitals and the margins get reduced. Now, in this uh, uh, new rate which has been proposed, there, there is no input credit. Reacting to the move, industry body FIKI has written to Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman seeking a zero rating GST on healthcare services. In many countries of the world, healthcare services are given zero percent uh, rating not exempted. Our request to the government is also to make it 0% not exempted. Hospital associations have also expressed concern over the 5% GST on hospital room rents, warning that it will adversely impact patients as well as private healthcare facilities. The move complicates billing as room rent gets included in most treatment packages. Overall, if you look at it, yes, uh, a common man, uh, a common patient will have to pay a certain amount of GST, but in totality, the number of patients who will end up paying uh, will be extremely less. The GST levy on room rents has led to fears that quality hospital care will become dearer for middle income groups. No input tax credits will be offered for hospitals, so which means it will be a pressure on patients to pay higher for the facility that they will be taking from healthcare. And this is to be implemented from the 18th of July. And experts in the industry say that they are to appeal to Nirmala Sita Raman, the finance minister of the country, to take back this decision because this will be something that will hit the healthcare sector very badly and also majorly affect patients who are coming to seek for good care. With camera person Daniel from Chennai, this is Aksha now for India Today. In a major relief for consumers, the government has issued guidelines to bar hotels and restaurants from levying service charge. So next time, if a hotel or restaurant adds a service charge to your bill, don't pay the extra amount. Rather, you can file complaints in case of violation of the guidelines. My colleague Aishwarya joining us now to take us through these new guidelines. Aishwarya, uh, what are they uh, entailing and uh, what does this mean for consumers? All those people who love to go out and to eat, the CCPA has now come to your rescue. In a new order, the CCPA has, say, has said that all the eateries, all the restaurants, all the pubs, they cannot levy a service charge. If you want to tip, you tip it out of your own pocket and out of your own willingness. But in any form, in under any header, service charge cannot be levied now. There were many complaints which the CCPA had received in which customers were saying that they were being forced to pay the service charge, something that they thought should be voluntary. And that's exactly what the CCPA has done now. So the next time you go and you eat out, make sure you check the bill because if they are levying service charge, from now on it becomes something that the restaurants, that the eating industry cannot do so. With camera person Sanjay Kumar, this is Ashwara Paliwal reporting for India Today. But restaurant owners unhappy with the government's decision. Let's go across to Anurag Katyar, trustee, National Restaurant Association of India. Anurag, just when the industry is getting back on its feet, we've got one more, you know, whammy uh, coming its way. Talk to us about the implications of this. Yeah, absolutely. And that too, you know, the worst feeling is the feeling of being singled out. You know, service charge by some name or the other, levied by everybody. You call it convenience charge, you call it anything. 
and and i think uh, it is an unnecessary thing if you read the uh, you know the guidelines issued there is only one fundamental difference now from what we are doing to what the government has proposed earlier we said if we have pre informed you that we levy service charge prominently before you enter before you order then we take it as your deemed acceptance that you are you are going ahead despite knowing that there is going to be a service charge now the new guideline says you have to take specific uh, you know like uh, uh, approval from the consumers that they, they, are, they are okay to pay the service charge they have not specified how and why and i think that is where the core of the problem is everything else is as uh, normal as what we are we have been doing for decades nothing else has changed so what we have done is we have right now send this whole thing to our legal team our lawyers and uh, because it's a matter of interpretation how do you interpret uh, you know uh, consent so so we'll wait for that then we'll see what to do so initial reaction is it's it's being uh, a sense of being singled out totally unfairly you are disturbing something which is a global practice accepted everywhere including in india for last maybe few decades at least anurag thanks so much for joining us uh, on this burning issue for the restaurant industry we're going to take a very quick break on that note we'll be back in just a moment with the other business news of the day Maharashtra was preparing to welcome BJP's Devendra Fadnavis as its new chief minister but the news of rebel shifts in our leader Eknath Shinde becoming the state's chief minister came as a surprise to many this came shortly after Devendra Fadnavis and Eknath Shinde met governor BS Koshiari at Raj Bhavan to stake claim to form the new government but do you know what led to this u turn here are five possible reasons the first reason In 2019 the BJP and Shiv Sena fought and won the state assembly elections in an alliance however post the results the alliance broke up over the question of who would occupy the chief minister's position soon after that BJP's Devendra Fadnavis shocked the political world by taking oath as CM early in the morning with the support of the NCP's Ajit Pawar this hastily Globbed up alliance didn't last, but the move made the BJP come across as a party that had a lust for power. Having Ekna Chinde allows the BJP to project an image of a party that is not after power. The second reason, while departing as the Maharashtra Chief Minister, Uddhav Thakre had managed to set a narrative of having been backstabbed by the BJP, and also the rebel Ekna Chinde. During his resignation speech Uddhav said and I quote you have brought Bala Saheb sung down this was a direct message to Ekna Chinde and BJP unquote this narrative had the potential to bring Uddhav's emotional and political benefit as far as the voters and cadre were concerned by ensuring a shift sainik as chief minister this narrative will not have the same impact. Welcome back. The dramatic change in the fortunes of India's startup ecosystem in recent months has become a cause of concern. The large venture funds which till last year were vying for a piece of the startup pie have taken a step back in the wake of the economic slowdown. Sanjeev Goenka, chairperson RPSG Group, spoke at the India Today Conclave East with Rahul Kamal about the winter which has set in the startup space. Listen in. One of the big headlines at this time has been around the winter that seems to have set in in india's startup sector now you have uh, a fund that you run of your own which is about say 100 cr can you give us a sense of how you how you look at india's startup story at this moment and as a successful entrepreneur businessman your advice to those uh, who thought they were doing well or that their plane was set for take off and now suddenly don't know when the next round of funding will come and at what levels you know first of all i think hats off to all these people for their vision for their guts and for their ability to have raised finances in the way they did but in my thick head 
if a business keeps burning cash and keeps making losses, are valuations sustainable? I mean, in the long term, I'm not sure that's going to happen. I mean, several years ago, you had the dot-com things, and you know, all dot-com companies were valued hugely, and then they all went bust. Did you see this freeze coming? Did you see the winter set? No. No, quite honestly not. But I'm very happy to state that our own venture capital fund has done very well. We've got seven or eight investments only so far. We've had one exit, which has been fantastic. Uh, and uh, all the companies are trading at between four to eight times revenues from the time we invested, which was two years ago, roughly. And uh, the valuations are, I don't know, seven, eight, nine times. But those are valuations based on the last round of funding, and now you don't know, we don't know. when the next round happens what the actual value of that business is Absolutely. or what the current value of the business Absolutely. is. Absolutely, but the fact is that they've done well. They've done as well, if not better, than most of the more established funds. So we will now actually put in more money because we now have understood how to run this business and how to evaluate businesses. And we will also seek capital from outside. That's interesting. So how much more money are you looking to bring on the table yourself? How much money are you looking to raise? And what sectors are you looking at to spend that money in? And importantly, how are your investment decisions now different from the decisions you took when you went out to the market first? So far, it's been largely in the FMCG space. Now we'll broaden the horizon. And uh, we look at other spaces as well. Initially, we didn't know uh, what really went into a, a startup. I mean, you know, and for example, one of our first investments was something that we thought as a group of potential investors, the product was brilliant. It was a product that we would consume, but that's not the way to look at it. Uh, and we've learned. Fortunately, that's the company where we've had an exit. And that's the company which in our portfolio was not performing that well. But we've had a superb exit to a multinational, uh, and we're very delighted. But now we look at it far more clinically. Uh, and one of the key things that we look at when we evaluate a company is, what are the exit options? Who are the target companies who would buy that company? And how that portfolio fits in with theirs? Are they looking at those products? With token prices plummeting and TDS rule has added to the woes of crypto exchanges, spot trading volumes on crypto exchanges across India have declined as TDS has come into effect. Sumit Gupta, CEO and co-founder of CoinDCX, joining me now. Sumit, the combination of uh, TDS along with the volatility in the crypto market, how is that playing on investor sentiment? Uh, you know, we've seen Bitcoin nosedive and we're continuing to see a hammering. Uh, talk to us about some of the reasons and how you're assessing the situation. Yeah, well, uh, you know, overall, all the markets are a bit choppy right now. Not just crypto, but even equity markets. I have, uh, you know, I was I was looking at the U.S. markets. They have gotten a big beating. Equity markets in India, I think, uh, globally, all the uh, markets are currently, uh, uh, you know, going into a bearish phase. Crypto included. In crypto, I think, of course, uh, with one percent TDS, that is a, a even a, a you know additional blow to the uh, community as a whole. Uh, in terms of market, I think uh, uh, crypto uh, market overall is is uh, right now moving sideways. So not much activity happening in terms of the price, and uh, I don't know uh, it might continue, it might not continue. Uh, but overall, if you look at the sentiments, I think sentiments are uh, uh, largely uh, the volumes have dropped. The volumes have dropped in the last couple of months, especially after uh, you know the tax announcement. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the market activity can again rise if the market starts uh, movement. But with 1% TDS is where I think retail investors are uh, and the community is a lot uh, disappointed. And I think, uh, you know, that is that that might uh, result into low trading activity or people who are doing market making. Uh, they might uh, uh, not be interested in doing market making anymore. And ultimately, uh, this is going to impact the retail customers. Ultimately, the retail customers uh, will uh, uh, will end up paying a higher cost because there's no liquidity in the market because there are no market makers and market makers would not like paying 1% TDS. So 
the way it is structured, I think that, uh, uh, you know, in the current scheme of things that will suck the liquidity out of the market and the trading activity might fall. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as the market starts rising or as, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we see uh, Bitcoin uh, showing some price moves, the activity uh, might increase again. So, Amit, you also talked about the next six to nine months uh, when looking at investing in the crypto market right now. What should investors keep in mind? Do you see any relief in the interim? See, I would not comment on the price. I, I don't know if the Bitcoin price will rise or not. I am in no position to comment on that. Yeah. What I am sensing is that uh, overall market, uh, because of the global macros, are uh, uh, in a times mm -hmm. where there is uncertainty, right? We don't know how in which direction the market will move. It might go down, it might go up. Uh, I'm, I'm not in a position to comment on that. But what I, what I can sense is that the activity or the enthusiasm that investors were having three months back or six months back versus today, there's definitely a... Uh, 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 a slowdown in that primarily because of the tax because of the tds and today is the first day uh, uh and, and in the coming weeks we'll know how users are reacting to it uh but my sense is that because of one percent tds uh people who are uh who used to buy and sell actively they might uh, reduce their trading activity sure. just one interesting data point Ava, i just uh, remembered uh we were we were doing some rough calculation if you look at the overall crypto trading market uh, 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 you know, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, what is interesting is that more than, I think, 94, 95% of the users are doing 10 trades in a month in crypto markets, uh, right? And if you look at number percentage of users who are doing more than 20 trades in a month, that will be more than 85%. So you can see how frequently people uh, are trading or used to trade. But with 1% TDS, every time you make a uh, trade and if 1% capital is withheld, uh, that is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that 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 will require more working capital for any trader. And if I start with one lakh rupees in the beginning, after placing 100 trade, trades, I might uh, be left with almost zero capital, uh, which is going to be a huge blow to the industry. And uh, as I mentioned, right, this is 1% TDS is not going to be beneficial for any of the industry stakeholders, not even the government. All right, Samit, thanks so much for joining us. That's where we leave it on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching.